Oh, this is so good. Are you good to go? All right, welcome back everybody to another podcast. Uh, we are just a few days before the next season and uh, that is what I would like to say, but actually this podcast is recorded on May 13th, uh, way in advance of the season, but we will be pretending as if it's only one week left before we start off the real season. Um, I am CB, tournament organizer for CB Rifles, uh, a very big community tournament that's going on right now. We've just had the first kickstart season beyond, be, beyond us and we are going to go into the first like real season that actually really really matters um for that we've got three divisions the feudal division the rustic division and the play in division the feudal division will be the one where it's really about the championship the rustic division will be fighting to get into the feudal division same for the play in division those teams will be fighting to go into the rustic division and hopefully eventually go to the feudal division um Today with me, I've got some very special guests. I got Simone and Heather with me, uh, both players from Jacked Ultras, one of the teams that will be playing in the Feudal Division this season. Um, so I'm really excited to have you guys here. Um, welcome, Simone, first of all. Hey. Uh, thank you very much. And then welcome, Heather, as well. Oh, hi, dude. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, so just to start things off, uh, let's start with you simone uh please introduce yourself who are you what do you do in congress blade <laughs> um kind of i'm cytonic yep. from yekdo house and i'm currently on eu one in origin and yeah i'm kind of organizing scrims and just games in the yekdo trust team and just helping with the um, team management and stuff like that all right nice so you're pretty pretty knowledgeable about the team that's for yes. sure then. yeah yeah all right good uh heather what about you uh, hey, I'm Heather. I'm also from Origin. Uh, I've been playing the game for about, God damn enough, about 18 months now. Mm -hmm. um, started off on, e, uh, on EU5 and then I moved over to e, EU2 and then EU1. Um, I am it's kind of uh, kind of a shot caller and I help with the plans and a bit of um, team morale. Um, kind of the mascot for Jack Daltress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Uh, All right. Oh, you better know me as uh, Dada as well. Yeah, I was about to say uh, something about Dada, right? Yeah. Um, how do you feel about it being like the personal, what did you say, scapegoat <laughs> or target for, for Nine Fingers every single game that you guys play? Uh, see, uh, he can watch my bad plays, so he can't see the rest of the team's bad plays, so it's fine with me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, I kind of onto my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good distraction at least, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. I, I do know that with Twerky in the last fight against you guys in the last season, we tried to focus you, but we couldn't really find you. So, <laughs> our bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made my job. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, all good. Um, yeah, so for those of you who are listening, um, the CB Rivals podcast, we'll, we'll be talking about Jacked Ultras as a team, first of all, uh, about you guys, uh, Simone and Heather as well. Um, and then we will go into a very exciting thing that I'd like to do. It's the tier list for the Feudal Division. Um, you've prepared something as well, uh, and we'll compare the list. We'll see, we'll discuss all the teams and see where they fit in to our team list, uh, like tier list at least. Um, it might be totally wrong at the end of the season, but it's just to create some discussion and see what's going on there. Um, so that's all good and all fun. Um, we'll definitely put blame alias at the bottom. I, I think we have to agree on that one. Uh, for sure. um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, blab. Yeah, that's good. All right. Like, like, Eden. Yeah. Eden yeah, that them. might happen as well. We'll see. We how, have an EP, right? We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, but before we go into the tier list, let's talk about Jack the Ultras. Um, any of you? What is so? What would you say like um, is special about Jack the Ultras? What makes it different from any other team? I think um, one big difference is we started as a meme team, kind of. <laughs> we started as a joke, like in the CBL on season nine mm. or eight. We just participated for fun and we just wanted the big backflip emote, yeah. which you got just from participating <laughs> in round one. Yeah, that's, that one is really cool, actually. Yeah, so it was kind of our only motivation to, mm -hmm. to join the tournament. And the next season, we wanted to try out a bit, but sadly, we lost to Surf Slayer in round one, mm -hmm. who won the CBL in that season. Yeah. And yeah, in at the beginning of the year, we decided to try out a bit more with the custom lobbies. Nice. And now we start to actually try out and improve our gameplay. 
Yeah, and it definitely shows that you're doing a really good job at it. Um, you've been getting quite easily into the top four, I would say, last season. Um, so, so that looked pretty co pretty convincingly. Um, you barely missed out on second place, which would be able allow you to play for the third place final. So that that seemed to work out quite well. And if we remember correctly, in CBL that you mentioned, um, I saw you guys playing a few games, I think, and um, I remember. If I remember correctly, at least that you at least tried out some like new strategies on on the games that you played. Is that correct? If I um, yeah, we kind of um, played the X Raiders in the season mm -hmm. before the most people knew how broken they are. Yeah, and they kind of helped us to win against the uh, Invictus teams. And yeah, the game after we played against Pond Guard, pretty mm -hmm. good. We went a draw on the siege map and lost the field battle in the last five seconds. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was one of the most insane field battles ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was insane. For any of you who would like to watch it back, uh, I'm pretty sure I've got it on my CB Highlights uh, YouTube channel uh, where you can rewatch. Re I'm pre pretty sure that highlight is there still. But that's one of the most insane field battles that we've ever seen in, uh, in a tournament. Yeah. Oh, that's so epic. Yeah, good that you remember that one. Yeah. Uh, all right, Heather, what about you? What do you think makes Jack Del Trust special or what is the goal with Jack Del Trust as well? Um, I think it's the commitment of mm -hmm. actually trying to be um, a, a good team. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really have a real shot caller. Um, <laughs> we we kind of just pick and choose on the day, but the plans that we make kind of um, allow shot call, like anyone to really shot call. Oh, yeah. Um, so you'll never really if you ever come into our comms like they're really hectic mm -hmm. uh, there is some structure to it and I, I i really like that about us and we took it from a few people from um the origin team um and we just really like their uh, like one of the players styles so we really wanted to incorporate that into the players that we've got um so yeah we don't really have a main shot caller we just kind of call the battles as we see them and mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy that aspect i really, I really love that so yeah. especially after being a, a shot caller in territorial for so long like mm -hmm. it's really nice to actually just kind of shot calling game and play the battles like that but yeah exactly that's what it allows so yeah yeah that's something that's actually becoming more interesting to me as a topic because um i think most team captains actually say that from at least from the like the the teams that are doing really well is that um, we got Temple Shot and also Pi in saying the same thing where they say, well, I, technically they are the shot callers or one of the players is a shot caller, but all the players actually like, yeah, give their input during the game. And it's, it, it's, it's almost like there's not one specific shot caller, which in a way doesn't seem like maybe the right choice because you have 15 voices, 15 yeah. players who can all shout and <laughs> scream and it can be very it's confusing. Yeah. Time. So, yeah. Yeah. How, how do you think it actually works for most like good teams then? Like, um, yeah. I think I think the best thing the best thing to describe that is like you can only really do it with a team that's been playing together for a while, mm. um, especially differentiating voices. I mean, we've got plenty of nationalities, so um, like the voice well, probably mainly German. I think I'm one of the only Brits, but <laughs> um, like people can tell voices from each other and that that, that helps in yeah. fights and when you when you know who's kind of covering your flanks mm -hmm. and they're saying something it just, getting that information from a shot caller like when they've not got like a top down point of view like can be really hard in these kind of games so um yeah, pushing information from like every player whilst also not cluttering the comms too much so like one of the main shot callers like so i do it every now and then so does jacked and we had Kaz Tam for a while and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Hephaestus, I think, before that, right? Um, but they can just say a simple call and then we just kind of call the battles ourselves. So um, it's not something that came easy. It's certainly something that takes a lot of practice. But mm -hmm. once you get it down, it's, it's it's super helpful. Yeah, yeah, totally. Is this something you recognize as well, uh, Simon? Well, I mean, you're on the same team, so I hope you do. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Also, another big problem is um, we have a few shot callers in our team mm -hmm. who were shot callers back in the days for TW raids and stuff in different houses. But shot calling in a custom lobby or general in tournament games is completely different because mm -hmm. you have to work with limited units, lives, deaths, artillery and stuff. Yeah. And you need just way more information because yeah, it's just completely different game style to TW. So it's way harder to find a good shot caller or mm -hmm. to understand how shot calling needs to be done in a tournament match. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's also interesting, isn't it? That for some reason there's there's 
in territory wars has this very hi hi hierarchic uh, style of i guess uh, commanding quite often right yes yeah that's a very clear commander and then everything everyone just has to follow the, the orders but with, with the tournament it seems more like more like flat and more yeah shared uh decision making you could say or something yeah that's interesting isn't it um all right uh anything else about jack Dutro? what is your goal for next season Let, let's just start with that one uh um actually winning again against plebs that'd be nice that'll be one uh, yeah that, <laughs> that would actually put you in the in the in the competition probably for first place as well yeah nah to, to be fair I'm, I'm interested to see what the other uh, teams in the mm -hmm. like the other four brackets I'd, I'd be interested to play chocolate paladins again i think did they get in to the feudal again or uh, they they, they got into the uh, rustic division yeah just barely but yeah ah so yeah yeah so yeah. um like oh my god the rustic thing is just it's kind of uh oh it's stacked isn't it jesus oh um, yeah so i'm really it's... interested in playing against some of the mm -hmm. other people over there yeah most of the teams in rustic division actually quite good like or some of it yeah and for sure some of the new teams also that are getting into it and haven't been in tournament before like there's been a lot of roster changes actually which is very interesting i think um yeah we'll, we'll talk more about that later or actually we, we will talk about it with blake we have done that technically when we are uh releasing this podcast <laughs> but more about that later um but yeah uh, totally the yeah but so let's focus on the feudal division for today at least for for our conversation um so you said of course beating plebs they are the number one from the first kickstart season of course uh previously known as we are clowns but they're going back to their original name plebs um yep. yeah they are definitely the team to beat um they haven't made many changes throughout the off season i believe so they will definitely be a strong team. Um, so obviously they, they, they are one team to, that you look forward to beat. Um, what are the, the other teams that you are looking forward to, to competing with? For sure, we finally want to beat Pond Guard. Mm -hmm. They oh, are God, the yeah. only team we lost to in the last season. And kind of, for me personally, it was our worst match mm -hmm. from our performance and yeah kind of um, our uh, main goal in general is just to be a strong team and don't be a team where other teams look at us and think like yeah it's just against it ultras it will be an easy week or easy mm -hmm. match everyone mm -hmm. needs to be like oh yeah these guys are hard to beat and they're always strong and just become a really solid team over a long time yeah nice that's nice and how are you trying to accomplish that currently without releasing any specific secrets of course I mean, um, the first step in Concourse Plate is always to keep all your main players or at least uh, building up a core, mm -hmm. like having always the same 10 people in your roster. Yeah. And of course, we personally need to fix our shot call up problem, kinda, because last season we had, like, like had I said, everyone was calling somehow, mm -hmm. and we switched like two or up to four shot callers in the whole season, and that's way too much. Mm. and yeah that's what we have to fix it this season and we hope it will work out right yeah i think scrimming a lot more as well um and trying to get a play against the teams that we didn't really get to scrim against last season mm. um because you can get kind of a one-way play style when you scrim the same teams so our, our main scrim partners are like i think it's okay to say this but like origin um and plebs and stuff so mm -hmm. you know get dumped every game like it'd be nice to play against some people that's got maybe a different play style yeah that'd be that'd be really nice yeah for um, sure it'd be, be interesting to see what the eden team can do as well yeah yeah the eden team uh, now known as no beaches team they rebranded as well they lost a lot of their players to the kebabs team uh, if i'm grammar correctly and that's some other teams as well um but yeah definitely interesting to see what how they actually managed to build up their their new team we'll talk more about it when we talk about the tier list but yeah Definitely true. And so, yeah, you were playing in Division uh, A or Pool A during the first kickstart season. I mean, you played against teams like uh, like Pond Guard, uh, Surf Slayer. Um, help me here. Well, Pond Guard, Surf Slayer, Chocolate Paladin. Exactly. Um, Blame, Blame, Blame Alias, Blame obviously. Blame yeah. And then there was more than them. Yeah, Triarchy, Odin's Legion, and Holy Crusaders. Odin's Legion, yeah, yeah. yeah, and Holy Crusaders as well. Um, yeah. The last three teams, Triarchy, Odin's Legion, and Holy Crusaders, are all going to the Rustic, Rustic Division, so you, you won't face them uh, next season. Same for Chocolate Paladins, like you said. 
Um, I know from Blake that he also looks forward to facing you again because the matches between you two are, were pretty nice. Um, so he's, he's hoping to get top two in the Rustic Division so he can play in the Feudal Division again next season. Um, which means that you have to stay in the Feudal Division, actually. Um, easy. Yeah, it should be easy. All right, all right, good call. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, in Pool B last season, we had um, obviously Plebs, we are clowns. Um, then right. we also had Eden, like you said, no beaches. And then for three and four, we had Rose and Slavs. Um, anything that you know about those two teams as well? Um, Rose is a really good team, actually. Mm. They are also in our alliance on E1, so oh, nice. more or less we know them a bit. But um, for Rose, is kind of a special team for me because like many teams got, uh, I don't really want to use this kind of word, but uh, many teams have star players, mm. like just famous people who always carry or get many hero kills, like Amya, Pine, Jackie, or people like them, yeah. who always... Uh, I don't know, they are famous making a team popular. Mm -hmm. And for me, it feels like Rose don't have such a player. Yeah. But as a team, they are always strong, always bringing new styles and trying out stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a solid, strong team. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that. I, I, like from watching their games, I, I felt the same. Their team fighting or like when they were fighting, this is what I noticed. When they were fighting in, in games, they it looked like they weren't defending or attacking a certain point but then suddenly they would like with fewer numbers they would be able to hold a certain point and they would reinforce it like just in time and it looked very or felt very coordinated or you know, strong together but like you said that. yeah the, nightmare yeah so you've been you're playing with them in the alliance then have you also played against them as well yeah we scrimmed kind of mm -hmm. a lot on many different maps and it was always interesting, like one day it was kind of very even and it ended up in death matches and stuff, or mm -hmm. sometimes we kind of win and sometimes we got clapped hard. So mm -hmm. it was, we never knew on any map if we can beat them or if they will beat us. So it was always interesting to fight them. Yeah, that's really nice. That's good to know. Yeah, so when we eventually go into the tier list, like, um... We, we may just have to get, go there because we're talking about the team so much, but um, it, it sounds like you definitely have a, a pretty good feeling about what where teams level are right now because you've been scrimming so many teams as well, especially from EU1 at least. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, we're fairly confident. Yeah. That yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Um, maybe a few spicy things there, I'll tell you. Yeah. Sh should we maybe just, just go into the tier list since... since since we've mentioned it I'm so probably, much, yeah, yeah probably right. It's, it's it's just a thing that we we actually want to do, right? <laughs> that that's why we are here, I guess. Um, well, right. from this. Let's go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, I'll I'll bring it up on the screen. Uh, let me just put this here. Um, so for the tier list, what we are um, going to do is um, we got actually a and hang on, I, I gotta get this right. Um, we got a like a, a little bit of a template and what it says is tier s a b c and d now we've agreed to the following we are not going to use, to use the s tier because it's the preseason. um of course we've seen most of the teams play last season but honestly we don't know if any team is going to be s tier like the best of the best of the best you could argue that we are clowns or plebs deserve to be yeah. s tier because they won i think that might be the only one that we could put there would you agree? I think that would be, yeah, to yeah. be fair, that, that was one I was going to straight off the yeah, bat. Yeah, right. So, like, that, th that would be, like, without a doubt, the only one that's fair to put there. So, yeah. should we just start start with Plebs then and say they are definitely the only team that deserves to be S tier right now? Yeah, 100% for yeah. right. All right, all right. Then, then, then we'll just get, get that sorted and out of the way. Um, with all due respect, of course. But, yeah, that is just the way it is right now. They are the strongest team, so we just have to get them there. Um, and I'm going to try and get them there, as long as my program is going to work for me. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, uh, I guess I figured it out. Yeah, all right, I got it, I got it. All right, good, 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 good. <laughs> there we go. It's late, guys. I've had a good barbecue, uh, just so you know. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, Plebs S tier, without a doubt, right? They won the first kickstart season uh, very, very convincingly against Bondgard. I mean, it was a 3-1 victory. Bondgard played really, really well, but Plebs 
like without a single loss in the regular season. They were undefeated for 17 games before the final started, including the core tournament before the before the CB Rivals. And against Bondgard, they also only lost one game. So they are definitely a really strong team. Uh, we know that their roster isn't changing very much, so they've been sticking together for a really long time. They've been working together a really long time. Um, and if you listen to the podcast I made with Temple Shot a couple of weeks ago, um, you will start to understand why their team is so strong as well. So, all right, Plebs, S tier. Um, then, what's the, what's the next team you would like to talk about? Um, let's go with uh, Eden. Yeah, Eden. All right, so no no beaches right now. Previously known, previously known as, uh, as Eden. I mean, yeah. I'm going to say something spicy here, but I think they're going to be the bitches of the, uh, the bracket. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me why. Um, I, just, I just don't feel like they've got maybe the quality that they had they brought back mm-hmm. last season um i mean people might argue the fact that like, you know they've got a good shot caller you know in ghost decks or whatever but to be fair i think that the hype is way too uh the hype for them before um they didn't really impress me in the games that they did play mm. i mean um you know i, I think they, they'll probably be uh d tier to be fair what right. about you, yes it is a pretty hot take because, of course, they like the Eden team that they originate from. Uh, they got placed fourth at the end of the season, going to the third place final. Um, they ended second in Pool B, B against teams like Plebs and Rose and Slavs. Rose, one of the teams that you said were pretty strong. Um, Pool B seems like a bit weaker than Pool A, that's for sure, in general. Yeah. So I guess that's that's part of the reason why you're saying this. And then, of course. We know that almost half of their team moved to different teams for this season. So big changes for them. Yeah. Uh, Simone, anything from you about uh, Eden and No Beaches? A- any reason why we should put them into C tier, maybe? Um, for me, it's hard to put them on D tier, mm. but I understand kind of Hedda's point of view. Yeah. Also, it kind of shows a problem in the Eden team if mm. they disband after losing a tournament match for the third place. Yeah, that's true. So, so it's kind of big reason to put them a bit down but i don't know one of our players left and went to the no beaches team mm-hmm. so maybe i would put them c tier because i wouldn't say they are the worst team in the bracket mm-hmm. but yeah yeah i don't know i'm kind of i don't know i can't say they will beat everyone or a lot of teams mm-hmm. in this tournament so we have yeah, to exactly. see how they perform but i don't expect them to play for the first place mm-hmm. actually yeah, exactly. But that's the big difference. So uh, I understand your point as well. Like, okay, I don't expect them to fight for first place either. But I also don't expect them to get like seventh or eighth in the pool and demote. Is that what you expect, Heather, from them? And like, of course, without uh, knowing anything that might happen. But is that, is that your expectation right now that they might demote? I think they probably be one of the teams that uh, will be fighting to try and stay up rather mm-hmm. than trying to fight for maybe top four. Yeah, um, true. All right, all right. So then the question is because I feel I, I before I, I probably would have put put them into B B tier, maybe C tier as well. Uh, I think D tier might be a little harsh, but I, I I do get your point. So what to do? What to do? Also, a problem is kind of their team is more or less they have a lot of player playing together for a long time. Mm-hmm. It's you can kind of say it's an old team, to be honest, because yeah. they participated with a lot of similar names and tournaments. Mm-hmm. And for this standing, kind of, they're performing fairly weak, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, they I can see what you're saying. stronger, kind of. So I don't know. I think C mm-hmm. is fair, maybe D, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we pro- because we have no idea. Like, like you said, they. They were strong, but not that strong in the end, I guess. Um, and then, with so many roster changes, there's no way of saying they are they are going to be better than C tier. I would say, um, yeah. All right, so let's just put them into D tier for now. Like hot take, I feel like um, <laughs> they definitely won't like you, Heather. Um, I've been fighting to get to get you into C tier, guys. Uh, don't blame it on me. Um, same for Simone. Like it's it's all on header. You can target him in the next season uh, again. I'll that. That's yeah, fine. exactly. Fine. He he's going to be like, even even better in uh, start, <laughs> starting next season. All, all 
I'll have to look up the schedule in a, in a few minutes and see when you play against the uh, next season. But, oh, uh, so I can take a week off and we play. Yeah, yeah exactly. You should. You should. <laughs> all right. All good. All good. All right. Uh, on to the next team. Who's next? Um, who do we have? Probably. Oh, should we just, uh, someone else that I think would probably be fighting for, um, like to get out of division would probably be Slavs. Yeah. Um, absolutely nothing against them. I think they're really cohesive, um, which has probably been a big problem with a lot of teams recently. But I just don't see the quality there, and maybe their planning and um, mm -hmm. the way that they structure their the way that they fight. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's there's nothing. I've got nothing against them. Like that, mm -hmm. maybe I've got a bit of salt against Dino. Yeah, there's um... for sure. Like th there's there's nothing personal in, in in what we're going to do here, right? It's just like with the information that we've got from watching the tournament and maybe your scrim results as well, or mine experience against teams. Um, that, yeah. that, that's what we're working on. So you're saying that Slavs, based on what we've seen, like they finished third, or I believe they finished third with the same amount of score as Rose did, but they also actually would have been able. They could have been fifth in their pool as well, is what I'm trying to say, in, uh, until the last yeah. round. So they definitely didn't make a strong impression. Um, something, and, and also, I mean, it's kind of weird to say this, but they are from EU2. And what I mean by that is it's pretty, pretty, there's pretty clear impressions that uh, EU1 is definitely stronger in terms of like the competition at the top compared to EU2. Uh, Slavs is definitely one of the stronger teams on EU2, but EU2 generally is like definitely less like weaker than EU1. Um, so we've yeah. got that as well. Then um, I, I don't think I think if you look further into that, that, that mm -hmm. maybe um, it, it's they've not been they've not had that kind of cohesive bond. Like I think EU1 has had like one or two extra seasons, mm -hmm. um, if I'm correct. Yeah, true. Um, and EU2 didn't really get like based until maybe like. EG days, mm -hmm. um, which was like season two or whatever it was. Yeah, and then exactly. It wasn't super strong until like maybe season three. Yeah. So E one has got like all these team, these players like maybe Java Mall and you know from Pirate mm -hmm. and all these uh, kind of other teams and yeah. um, push or kick or maybe. Um, so like, yeah, yeah, you've got a lot of bonds there that you've got to kind mm -hmm. of push through, and EU two hasn't got that yet. Yeah, exactly, and it's interesting. Like you, the one team that you mentioned, and Gegner, um, we I definitely hope that they 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 are interested in joining Cyber Rivals. I hope they will join one day. They are the team from EU2 that actually dominated the whole tournament scene for uh, almost every tournament that they played in. Um, so yeah, they definitely show that even from EU2, you can still be really strong and show up there. But yeah, for now, I think we should put Slavs in D tier. Um, I gotta say one thing that you may not know is that Slavs is playing with two teams into the Polish CB uh, league. So there's a like a copy pasta Congress oh. Blade Rivals League for only Polish teams, and they are one and two right now, undefeated, only tied against each other. So they are like playing lots of games um, and definitely improving a lot through all those games. So they they can. I think they they are on my like number one uh, list of like like number one team on the list of potentially being an upset for next season. So, okay, I can see that. Yeah, s small small bit of information that maybe they hope wouldn't leak out, but it, it <laughs> it's public if you if you understand some Polish or at least join the Discord. So yeah, all right. Um, next team. Um, let's just work from the bottom up. I, I think that that makes sense now, right? Because we've got two teams at the bottom. Um, I believe Rose is one of the other teams that might stay a little closer to the C or B tier, e even despite all that you have said. Um, for me, actually, yeah, yeah. You, you got yeah, a different opinion. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, shoot. I mean, for me, Rose is a team that is jumping between B and C tier. Mm -hmm. Like depending how, I mean, on some games they are B or maybe even a weak A tier team. Yeah, but sometimes they just before perform like a C tier team. Hmm. So it's worth to tell you. So I would put them kind of in the middle, maybe on the B tier, but yeah, it's worth I to think, say. Yeah, if to try and do like a maximum or two, but probably push them to C. Mm -hmm. Um nothing like I think I think they've got real I think they've got more potential to upset the bigger teams, you know, Surf Slayers, uh, plebs, mm -hmm. 
teams like that uh, rather than rather than maybe um, slab. So yeah, probably I'd probably push towards C. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's actually a good thing you're doing here right there because we're trying to like estimate comparative strength between these teams, right? Like how how do they compare against each other? And then okay, plebs definitely the stronger team, pond guards. Um, Perhaps like Blame Alias, two teams that a Surf Slayer, three teams that I believe should definitely be considered stronger than Rose. Maybe you guys will talk about you later, Jack Del Trust, and you've got four teams that would be ahead of Rose, um, at least three. So I guess C tier definitely makes sense for them right now. Um, maybe if they can show we up. Swap and change? Yeah. But if. Uh, yeah. Can we stop and change if. Uh... Yeah, yeah, for sure. If, if if we talk more about the teams and we figure out, okay, some teams might have to change, we can, yeah, we can definitely change them. Yeah, sure. It, this is our tier list, not uh, not anybody else. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I, I should probably say it's mine, but you're like, giving your input. Like, absolutely, like, uh, not with any bias, of course. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least that's, that's what we're trying to say here. Yeah. All right. All good. All good. All good. Um, all right, what's the next team you would like to talk about? So we still got, what have Maybe you got Surf left? Slayer. Surf Slayer? Yeah, sure. I think yeah. that's a really interesting team, actually. Yeah, shoot. What, what do you got? I mean, before the CB World season, mm -hmm. it was more or less an ST team because they never lost to a team beside the plebs on the final of the core tournament. Yeah. But I don't know. In the CB Wavels, they lost against Blemilares. They lost against us. They made a draw against Pondgard. If I remember correctly. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. yeah. Th that, that was one of the closest games we've had, actually. Pond card for the Surf Slayer, for sure. Yeah, and I don't know. It I, it kind of... Um, I don't look at them like such an OP or strong team anymore, mm -hmm. like, like Clowns are. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, I maybe would put them on B tier mm -hmm. because they're just not performing that strong as yeah we remember them, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, it it feels like they've fallen off quite hard after their loss against the uh, plebs in the in the court tournament final. Before yeah. that, they were definitely like they were rising, um, like so strongly. They were beating all the teams in CBL and also in court tournament until they lost against plebs. I mean, somehow they recovered from a zero two mm -hmm. in the CB finals on the CBL, yeah, and they won three to exactly. two. So yeah. Insane. And, and also something else that you guys mentioned is that they got star players like Jackie Trin, um, also Mask of Flames. Mask of Flames. Yeah, the, the whole Flames squad actually is really yeah. good. If, if, if you face them in a siege battle, you're doomed, yeah. essentially. Yeah, flares are, yeah, their whole team is very stacked, yeah. to be honest. All 15 players are mm -hmm. really good and old. And... Yeah, but like you said, despite that, they, they haven't seemed to be able to put it all together, at least in Cyber Rifles. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do how like no matter uh, it, it hurts me so much to put them into b tier but right now this is what the team looks like at least from the past season and again they i'm pretty sure that they are working really hard to get into a or s tier and win the season for sure but yeah i, I agree with you this is probably what we have to to work with right now header any reasons we should put them into a tier or do you even consider them c tier i hope not i'm actually gonna disagree a little bit in the fact that in their wins mm -hmm. like um i remember watching them against um chocolate paladins yeah um, i think it was there yeah and they didn't win super convincingly against chocolate um, paladins yeah, yeah. um and t t again chocolate paladins was probably hang on i'm i'm thinking of the right team aren't i chocolate paladins are that, in the bracket below us, aren't they? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's the yeah, team, okay, okay, okay. That's the team yeah. that you, you, you probably have some sort of rivalry going between you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, no, I had to watch their game. Um, mm -hmm. What was super interesting to me is the fact that they just... It didn't look like they was it was the stomp mm -hmm. that every team would have thought it would have been. Yeah. Um, so, in fairness, I, I, I'm kind of doing this for that. I would say this is for the benefit of them to kind of push them forward. Mm -hmm. But I would say there are teams that should be put in B and A over them. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably even push them to C. Oh, you actually put. Oh, wow. Yeah. I get what like, you're saying, though. Like, so yeah. So because they had such a close close fight against Chocolate Paladins, which arguably would be a pretty good fit for 
the feudal division, considering how much they've improved over their very first season as a tournament team. Um, yeah. But even then, knowing how good Sir Slayers were in other tournaments and how good all of their players are, um, and then seeing that they struggle so much against a new tournament team, um, and not having seen any major improvements yet, you say maybe they might be even C tier. Yeah. Yeah, I Oof. mean, I would. I, I agree with where you've placed them, but only mm -hmm. in principle and only on past achievements, right? Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's it's like this. Like they used to be S tier, definitely. Then the next, because it, it's not that long ago that they lost, so you would say, okay, then they move down to A tier maybe, uh, and B tier is, is already like more than uh, like I think they deserve, and then C tier would just be like. Oh, that's that's like kicking after they're put on the ground, man. Yeah, and I mean, in the I know, I know, I like, but then you watch their games against uh, Blame Elias and us, which mm -hmm. would, we were two teams to beat them. Yeah, and I, in our game, like I remember it very vividly. Like, like I just wondered, like, right, what the hell had happened? Yeah, like I expected much more of a fight. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, I know that's one of our strongest maps, but yeah, yeah, that's because not. You guys won against Sir Slayer as well, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, right. And then Blame Elias did as well. Bondguard did as well. So we got three teams there. Yeah, I, I, I think we just no, they drew. Oh, they drew? Oh, yeah, that's right. Bondguard drew them. So that's in favor of them again, right? I mean, you could you could say maybe they're not being that serious about this season. And they, like, but then they, you would expect them to also play really well against Blame Elias and you guys checked out Rust, knowing that yeah. you have history. Um, yeah, it's kind of rough. Um, I mean, who do you who do you put in CT like NCT over? Yeah, uh, the like honestly, guys? not any of the three teams that we have yet to choose. So, I yeah, I think we have to put them in. Like, I would give them B plus or C, but like, yeah, all right, we're going to do it. We're going to put them in C tier, um, but only because we believe they can be so much better, and we've been disappointed by their performance in the past season. Um, but we, yeah. we are confident that they will improve and get back to the A or the S tier for sure. Um, oh, they will. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, just f for my own like personal, um, how do you say, like ego, um, I actually want to want Jackie Trin in our match against them. And J the team <laughs> I played with, Triarchy, is on the very, very bottom. So that is not a reason to put him in the C tier. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, no. I didn't have the clip, but I made sure to mention it to <laughs> Jackie Trin that I got him. All right, all right, all right. All good. Um, okay, on to the next team. We've been talking a lot of time about Jesse yeah, Slayer, which they deserve for sure. Um, all right, so what we've got left is Pond Guard, Jacked Ultras, and then we also got Blame Elias. Oh, can we talk about Blame Elias? Yeah, sure. All right, go ahead. All yours. Um, I think out of everyone that kind of showed up, like... It takes a lot to reverse sweep a team. Yes, which they did in a third place final against yeah. Eden, no beaches. Yep. Yeah, which kind of has to give like a big amount of respect to like them to like keep their mental like go from going kaboom. Mm -hmm. to just... in, in fairness, those first two games didn't look super close. Um, I think it kind of was, but also it didn't. Yeah, like for, yeah, no. for those who haven't listened to the podcast after the season finished or watch the games. Um, Eden versus Blame Elias, the first two games were on Reginopolis and Eden looked totally in control. Like they 2 0 it on Reginopolis, then they went to the like on the Glora map and that's where Blame Elias 2 0 Eden. So they had to play on a tiebreaker field map and Blame Elias just hard stomped Eden in one of the fastest field battles ever on Grassland. Um, but Eden looked to be going to a 3 0 in a third place final. Yeah. Exactly. Like which <laughs> to sell it. In Venice, I put them in as probably A tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think you have no other choice. Honestly, they finished third um, in the last season, and they seem to be only getting stronger throughout the season. Um, all of their players are actually in the top ten, or almost all their players are in the top twenty. You could say for most hero kills, most unit kills, they're just like playing so aggressively and getting so many good results with it. Also in their own stats, but also in their wins. And yeah. And and I know that their team is mostly sticking together. Some of their star players, like actually, this this might this might impact them a bit more um, 
than you might expect. But some of their star players, like Ugurai, who has been their top three player almost every single game, um, is switching teams, for example. So they definitely have to work a little bit, perhaps, to maintain that synergy. But yeah, A, a tier for sure, for me at least. Um, Simone, any reason why you would put them into B tier? or? Um, I kind of disagree, actually, with the A tier. Yeah, go ahead. Because the reason is for me, the one of the next teams we are going to talk about is Pontcard. Mm -hmm. And for me, Blame Elias is, of course, weaker than Pontcard mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah, that's true. And actually, the biggest plus of Blame Elias is they got in their position be or for the A tier because they beat Eden. Mm -hmm. But kind of, we are waiting Eden as a pretty weak team at mm -hmm. the moment. Maybe yeah. not because they are bad in general, but they are underperforming for their mm -hmm. player quality. Mm -hmm. But I don't see them in the A tier just because they made a recover against one of the weakest teams of the next season mm -hmm. of this bracket, kind of. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I feel like the reason that Eden is so low is also because half of their team switched, right? So, but uh, yeah, again, I, I get what you're saying. Um, comparing to the Pond Guard. I agree, like, Bondgaard seems to be much stronger than Blame Elias, at least in the last season. Um, and we know that they are also sticking together for the next season. Um, but, so, Jack, would you put Jack Tiltrust, the other team that we've got left? I, uh, I think B. Above Blame Elias. Yeah, you still think Blame Elias for B or for A? I would go with Blame Elias for B. Mm -hmm. Heather, what about you? Um, i put them in A. Um, yeah. All right, oh. then, Simone, we're going to stick to A, because I definitely think okay. they, yeah, well, I, I think they deserve it, getting with their place, and, and also, I believe they have been making, like, really strong improvements over the whole season, um, and I, I, I know that you want to kick them down, because you, yeah, they, they got you, so I have to put them in A tier, I can't put them with you guys in B tier, I just can't. <laughs> All right, um, <laughs> we're moving to uh, Pond Guard or Jack Del Uh We cannot finish with Pond with Jack Del uh, So Jack Del where do you put yourselves? Uh, I'd say B, just because there's a little bit of improvement. I think we've got yeah. probably. I think it, I think it's tough because we uh, actually had some really really good showings. Like the only bad showing we had was against Pond Guard, and I think that we would have been. I think we would have been in a similar situation than what Blame Elias was against Eden. Mm -hmm. um, but just, yeah, I'd still say we've got work and we've only got one or two team changes, I think, this year, but this season. But um, I, I'd, say, I'd say B. Comfortably, I'd say B. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, I, I do think, I, I agree. Like, just nothing else. I, I think you're a perfect fit in B right now. Um, You've shown very strong improvements. You've shown to be able to fight the top teams and to be able to beat the bottom teams quite easily. Um, but it seems like you're just not there yet, but you're also not at the bottom for sure, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, solid beat here. Well done. You can look forward to facing Chocolate Palantis next season, hopefully. Um, <laughs> if you show up to your expectations, at least. Um, all right, Pondgard, the last team that we have to talk about, and they are one of the most exciting tournament teams for sure. So, um, why do we put them in A tier? Because I guess that's where we're going with this, right? Um, or not? I, I yeah, I th I think they're just very well structured. Um, in I don't know how they lost so hard in the finals mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I kind of do know I like yeah but but yeah go ahead first yeah um I, I, I personally can't see why they lost so hard mm -hmm. um I mean they utterly stomped us yeah. um I mean we they had some troubles on their attack but their defenses are so solidly worked that I just think they're probably up there as one of the the better team so I I'd, I'd say a I think I think I think it's actually a tough fight between um them and Blame Elias. I think Blame Elias got quite unlucky on their games. Mm -hmm. um, I still think some of their players are really bad and they're dragging them down um, mm. uh, in, in Blame Elias. But to, yeah, to, for Pongar, for me, just, they're, they're just solid. Like, you, you can't ask for a better solid team. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just wish they'd scrim more against <clears throat> other teams because. Yeah. It, I, it, that it might be. The, yeah. I, I think that might be the only reason why. But, like, even despite that, they're still second place in the last season and always being so strong. So, 
But definitely being the NA team and not having the strongest competition in NA means that their team isn't able to scrim that many good teams regularly. Yeah, so, they're the oldest yeah. team as well in the tournament. <coughs> yeah, true. Yeah, definitely. They're one of the oldest teams in their life. They, they, they played against Endgegner in one of the very first tournaments finals. The best of seven, like, went to 4-3. It was one of the best ever. Um, again, also on CB highlights, actually. Um, but, yeah. I'm watching. Yeah. Just, just, just go there. It's, it's good. You can rewatch all the old games as well. Um, other than that, go to CB Rivals YouTube channel because all the good games are there. Um, but, yes, Pond Guard, um, they're just showing up each each time once and like again and again they went undefeated except for one tight game against surf slayers in the regular season last um for the sea rivals first season so yeah like if you don't put them in a tier i don't know where else like are you <laughs> are arguably s tier but plebs is there because they won no. and b tier that's that's just not there not where they should be um and the argument argument about the scrims doesn't make sense because it isn't showing their results right True. They, they are winning their games against all the teams in in the in the strongest. Oh, that's process. not the argument against them. I just I, yeah, I, yeah. I wish they play against us. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing. You hope that they you get to improve by playing against them, because now you might actually not be improving as much because you didn't get a chance to play them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. I just had to do a little cough, so that's it. Um. Yeah, uh, we got our tier list complete, actually. Uh, I love it. It's pretty good, I think. Um, so looking over it again, you can see it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Simone, you too? Yeah. Yeah, all right, all good. Um, any changes you would like to make, uh, if, if you look at this? Or do you feel that this, is, this pretty much sums it up quite well? Um, for me personally, it's um, more or less it's pretty good, but I personally would wouldn't rate Yacht Ultras weaker than Blame Alliance. Hmm. So for me, I would kind of switch these two teams. But I understand why Blame Alliance is on eighteen. Yeah. So I'm more <laughs> or less fine with it. <laughs> I, I like your confidence. Let's 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 go with that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, like yeah, totally. But it. it I cannot say anything else than your opinion is very biased right now because Blame Elias got third place and yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, I guess I I could make an argument for Blame Elias and Jack Ultras to switch considering that you guys are improving as well, being a stable team, not having that many roster changes probably. Where Blame Elias actually lost quite a few of their players to teams like Kebabs, another strong tournament team that's coming in new. Um, so, yeah. But again, I, I could see the argument, but for now... With the information that we actually got from the games that we watched, we need to do this. Uh, put the blame lies in A tier for sure. But yeah, Edder, what about you? I'm struggling. To, to, I'm also struggling with blame lies. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I I just I, I just don't want to see him next to Pongard because I just felt mm. like he was a bit waves above them as well in their games. Um, I mean, they lost Allenburg to Pondkart. Yeah, that's true as well. They lost against Pondkart, right? Yeah. It's It's true. No, but they lost the attack and the defense as well, so... Yeah. Yeah, you could also look at it this way. So, um, if you consider that... So, at first we we were planning to do S... Like, not not doing the S tier, right? But we said, okay, Plebs, they won a tournament. They're so good. They need to be in S tier. Normally, we would have put Plebs and Pondkart in A tier, probably like tied together because they they were so close in the finals as well and then you would have blame lies definitely into beater because they they wouldn't compare to plebs and pond guard together yes yeah right the, that's basically the argument that you're making like yeah but then i do think that jack the ultra should be at least for now just a little bit below blame Elias. um in terms of this tier list at least true i mean <clears throat> I just have to ask ah, no, no, no. uh, it, 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 this is getting nitty picky for sure but um, <laughs> yeah all right. so all right, what I'll do I'll move Pondicard to the top and I'll move Play Malias like clearly a little bit below them into the A tier um, 
just so we understand, at least when you put him, put him between, put him between Pongard and Jack. Uh, uh, just, uh, <laughs> just a little bit in between them, but still clearly in the A tier. <clears throat> we, we'll go with that. Um, and then I think this is this is pretty good. Uh, sh yeah, yeah, we're not going to do the same with Surfslayer Rose or No Beaches and Slaps. Um, we just, we're going to stick with this um, because I think the argument at the top is the closest and. The others could be a bit more fake, maybe. So, yeah. All right. Um, I'm happy with this tier list. Uh, we'll see how everybody was watching or listening um, things with it. So, just to go over it once again. On S tier, we got Plebs, previously, previously known as We Are Clowns. On A tier, we got Pond Guard, just above Blame Elias, also in A tier. In B tier, we got Jack Trust. In C tier, we got Surf Slayer, together with Rose. And in D tier, we got No Beaches, previously known as Eden and Sloughs. And those are the eight teams for the Feudal Division playing for the championship next season. Nice. It's ours. This is going to be good, guys. Like I'm calling it, we're beating clubs. <laughs> yeah, who knows, who knows. All right. Um, <laughs> do you think this tier list might stand at the end of the season or do you expect any changes? Uh, only change probably might be Surf Slayers and No Beaches, but everyone else will mm -hmm. probably stay around the same. All right, interesting. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if you're correct about your uh, predictions. Uh, Simone, do you think the same? Or do you say uh, Jack Jack was S tier, definitely? Uh, of course, we will go for the S tier next season. <laughs> nice. That and a lot of stuff will switch because everyone will try out much more than the last season. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of predictable because most of the teams can beat each other. Mm -hmm. It highly depends on the maps, like attack-sided, mm -hmm. defense-sided, equal maps, yeah. like Fjord, Wolf, or stuff. Definitely, I agree. And this is one of the things that I really look forward to. Like, all of these teams are strong, like, for sure. Um, like I said, you believe Rose is really strong as well. I believe Slavs is also really strong because they, because they get to play so many games in the Polish League. Um, so, I believe every single team is really strong in, 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 in the field division. And something that we haven't seen, I think, in the first season is that it's a best of two that you get to play. So, you get to attack once, defend once. And against strong opponents, you can actually, like, if you expect to lose, you can gamble with it all on like one attack or one defense, depending on what you think you're strongest with. Invent some some surprise strategy, and then you can actually get a tie, and that would like give you so much in the in the whole season. So yeah, I hope and look forward to seeing something like this happening. Actually, we'll see. Um, all right, anything else you guys would like to talk about uh, before we finish up this podcast? Uh. Just a little note for one of our old friends. Uh, Sartonic, you're bad. <laughs> there you go. Got it. Just because we can. Yeah, I guess. All right, Simon, okay, anything from you then? Uh, no, I think I'm fine. It's All right, fine. perfect. All right, then, uh, then I just want to thank you guys so much for joining us uh, in this podcast. Um, it was great to have talked to you about Jack Trust, the team, um, that we now know a little bit better. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the Feudal Division. Uh, that's for sure. I'll be watching, hopefully, all of your games. Um, yeah. So that'll be really good. And I look forward, forward to watching Ninefinger continue the data meme. And I hope that teams continue to, to look for you on the battlefield. And also in the sieges, like right. just do it guys. Just find Heather on the sieges, kill him and shout better. That's it. All you need to do. Um, um, the game. <laughs> suicide trapping not allowed though. Like, please, just don't do it guys. That, that's not fair. Um, all right, that's it for us for today. Um, see you on the very first Sunday of the Sea Rivals League. It will be starting on May 29, and it will be tons and tons of fun. We got casters, so it will be live streamed on Twitch TV, everything, and all the games currently rewatched on Team Rivals YouTube. My voice voice is going way out of voice, uh, like tune, whatever. Um, so go to the Discord, rewatch all the games, get ready for Sundays, and um, see you next podcast. Thank you, guys. No worries, have fun. Yeah. I wanna taste the pain. I think I'm seeing all red. Two bullets in the gun, one shot to the head. I need a blank space. Cause everything.